um, a role, an interesting title um, called Chief of Staff. Um, so I work very closely with the head of communications for the entire company, so the chief communications officer uh, for Microsoft. And I spend a lot of time a little bit in the future. And I get to see what's coming and how do we plan our communications around those things. And so it's been a pretty interesting job, to say the least. Um, you may have seen some uh, headlines in your news feeds this past week on some of the things that Microsoft has been working on on the AI front. And so I've been deeply involved with that. Um, but on top of the strategy piece, I do a ton of content and um, content development. I do a lot of writing and I also manage my boss's LinkedIn account. And so that's what we're going to kind of get into here today. So how it's going to run the next little while is we're going to do four things. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on personal branding, why LinkedIn, and then we're going to get started on our profile. So I'm going to walk through eight steps um, to get started on your profile. There's, there's a lot more than eight, but um, we'll spend our time today on eight. And I'm going to try to keep it my eye on the chat window um, and Jyoti is gonna help um, moderate. So we'd like to kind of keep this informal and engaged. So as you come up with questions, like don't wait, just pop them in the chat and I'm gonna try to answer them in real time. And then we'll have some more time for open Q&A at the end for any questions that didn't get answered or any questions you have for me working in um, communications or working at Microsoft. All right, so before we get into LinkedIn specifically, I think it's really important to spend a few minutes on personal branding and how to leverage personal branding on LinkedIn. And I have a question for you. So in the chat window, if you can please, in a word or two, tell me what comes to mind when I say personal brand. Writer, identity, ooh, identity, first, impre first impression, how others see you, yeah. I specific, what you offer, visual brand. Jyoti, can you say a little bit about what you wrote? Yeah, so typically whenever I look to um, do any kind of research about a company or a person that I might be working with, I go on and check their online presence and kind of gather up kind of like almost like a first impression by looking at their online mm -hmm. presence first. And then that way I'm kind of just more prepared when I actually meet them in person. So you're already making a, you have an idea in your head without meeting them, what they're about. Mm -hmm. Correct. Visual brand, what you offer. Yeah. I mean, all of this, this is what we're going to talk about today and, and next week is, you know, how do you create your personal brand? Um, and you mentioned it, Jyoti, like an image of how you would like to be seen to others, you know, whether that's through social or elsewhere. Another way to think about it is when you haven't met that person, but that person knows something about you. Like, what is that thing that they're thinking about when they think of you? And I'm hoping that through the lens of LinkedIn, we can help you, each of us, get closer to putting more intention around what our personal brand is. So I have another question here for you is, how would you rate the confidence you have in your brand today? A, confident in your brand, how to leverage it for opportunities. B, unsure about how to position yourself and you're seeking some advice. C, you need to rebrand to be relevant for future opportunities. 
D, don't even know where to start. See lots of Bs here. B, Cs, some Ds. All of the above. <laughs> D, C, between B and D. I don't see A's. Okay. If you picked B and you're not really sure how to position yourself, um, a good place to start is kind of learning about the key ingredients of branding and start building. So you're in a good place here with us. Uh, if you picked C, a little bit of a need to rebrand, um, you're starting from a good spot, um, even if you have to do a little bit of rebranding because you already have a foundation. Um, so we can work from what you have already and uh, make it more visible. And especially, you know, when you're not in the room, find out how to already get known. And if you picked B, it's okay. You're here, you've started. So regardless of what you picked, I think one, one kind of key piece I want to land here is everything begins with trust. And I'm going to break that down a little bit. So if you're looking to contribute in some way to society in a professional manner, so if you want to work at a company, an institution, a career begins not when others trust you to do the job, but when you trust in your own capabilities. I'm going to say that again. A career begins not when others trust you to do the job, but when you trust in your own capabilities. So you, any of us can get any job, sort of maybe like a random job, not too hard to get. But in order to build the brand that you need to grow in a career, you need to trust yourself that you know what you're capable of. And if you're not sure what that is, one way to think about it is you know, what would your friends or family or peers say about you? So like, just think about that for a second. Like, what would they say about you? Would they say you're the first to volunteer for something? Would they say you're always late? Would they say you think before you speak or you don't? Like those things that they're saying about you, even if you disagree, if you like it or not, like those are part of your personal brand. And so you want to think about if that's, you know, the way you want to kind of continue uh, moving forward, if you want to want to make some adjustments. Um, and why this is important, um, this is another kind of key piece here is it's Personal branding, even though the word personal sounds like it's about you, it's actually not just about you. Um, we didn't become ourselves by ourselves, obviously. The people around us shape who we are. Um, so this is this just this moment I want to emphasize and kind of like if you just take one thing away from this session today, like write it down, like tuck it away in your brain, like type it on your phone. Um, but it's this word others, and it's going to come up a couple times today, and it's going to come up next week. Others, branding yourself by others. Um, so we can often get caught up in ourselves, um, especially for those of us who are starting our careers, where it's about me, right? It's about how do I get a job? How do I get that job? How do I get followers? How do I get what I want? How do I get what I deserve? And what I'm saying is that while you're building on that I part of your personal brand, at the same time, you want to build the others part too. And this has been a lesson that I have learned over many years, thinking about others while I'm building my own personal brand. So even though today we're probably going to spend a little bit more time on the I part because we're going to talk about the profile, um, 
we'll also kind of touch more next week on the others part. Um, so I'll just give a quick example on LinkedIn where, um, you know, it's, it's probably easy to post about things that you're good at or things you're working on, um, accomplishments that you've made. Um, but what we want to do is balance that with posts about what your team is doing, what your peers are doing, what your faculty is doing, what SFU is doing. Um, so there's going to be a balance here that's really, really important to building your brand. Um, another thing to keep in mind when talking about personal branding is that authenticity always, always rules. Yeah, less self-centered approach. Um, be authentic. I mean, we all know this. <laughs> We've been told this. We're all on social. Like, we're told authenticity rules. Um, but it's it, it's true. I mean, withholding your true self, it puts a cap on trust and, you know, at the end on your ability to grow your career. Um, and this doesn't mean you have to put everything out there. Like, please don't put everything out there. Um, but it also means that if you're having a rough day, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're stressed out, like it's totally okay to reflect it on LinkedIn, like share what you're learning, share your struggles, share how you're overcoming them. Like, like be a little bit messy, um, show the kind of the human side of what it's like to kind of grow um, in your in your professional life. And people really, really gravitate towards towards content like that. All right. And the kind of the last piece, personal branding has a lot of content out there. So, you know, this was just a very quick few minutes. Um, so you can definitely learn more on LinkedIn even has courses on it. Um, but there's this one piece I want to kind of land on this personal branding, um, which is to find your superpower. So I wrote mine there. Uh, mine is I'm a communicator, coach, connector, and cold weather person uh, who is passionate about finding opportunities for leaders of all career stages to shine with purpose. Um, this is also my personal brand statement. And if I was to ask you, how would you define yourself? If someone was to ask you, what words would you pop, uh, would you come up with? If there's anything you want to share, um, pop it in the chat window. I'm curious to see what you have to say. You know, what are some of those words that you would really powerfully associate yourself with? Dependable. Yeah. Each of us has something. And it's totally okay if it changes. Like that's totally expected. Creative. Yeah, determined. We need that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Doesn't it feel good to write these down? Ambitious, versatile. I'm getting all the feels just reading this. <laughs> These are your superpowers. Adventurous, ooh, I wanna get to know Lisa. So if you haven't done an exercise like this before, after this session, just think about it. Write it down, take a walk, show a friend or a peer, see if they agree with what you came up with. Yeah, positive. It's these kind of words that you're putting in the chat right now that are gonna help you create your personal brand. And you can leverage it on LinkedIn, what your brand is, what you have to offer. And you'll notice something in mine. Do you see that it doesn't talk about my current role? Doesn't say Microsoft, doesn't say what I do. It travels with me. It's really the grounding principles, what I'm about. And this one's taken a long time to, to polish. So I don't expect you to come up with the perfect statement sentence uh, in a day, but it takes some time. So start thinking about it. Empathy, yeah. All right. 
Now let's get into LinkedIn, love LinkedIn. All right, so really, really quickly, why are we talking about LinkedIn? LinkedIn is all about you, your professional community, and helping you connect to opportunity. So for example, if you wanna be a marketing manager, one day, or you want to get promoted to a senior marketing manager one day, you can use LinkedIn um, and, and start looking at who are people doing those jobs today. You can follow these people. What are they doing? What are they up to? What trends are they following? What are they reading? What are they commenting on? And then remember what I said earlier about others yeah success is when you when who you are lines up with what you do and, and it can't be done alone so you remember to comment on others posts like others posts share others posts at the same time as you're learning for yourself uh, so here's a couple pretty powerful things that linkedin can do for you um, you can use it to connect to your professional world stay informed through professional and industry news. So I, I use a lot of it as a news channel. Um, get hired and build your career. Get hired. You can get hired on LinkedIn. It's pretty powerful stuff. Okay, now let's get started on your profile. I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking through eight steps related to your profile. I'm going to stop after each step and just kind of let, let it soak in a little bit. Um, and you can ask any questions um, as we get through the steps. And then next week, we're going to get into the fun stuff. Uh, we're going to get beyond the profile. We're going to talk about networking, how to make connections, how to talk to people on LinkedIn. Um, and it's going to be really fun. But let's get started on your profile. All right. One thing to remember is that you should think about creating your profile like creating your story. This is, goes back to the personal brand. Like show yourself in your profile, all of it, just show it all. Um, and First step, not should not be a surprise. Step 1A is please add your photo. It should be you alone, shoulders up, face visible, profiles with a photo, get something like 21 times more profile views. Here's Bernice, great example of a photo. Um, that should be on your LinkedIn profile. No round, grayish, green circle things, not okay. One B, add a background image. Show a little personality again. If you currently have that gray background-ish, greenish thing on LinkedIn that they automatically put there for you, please change it out. Change it out. <laughs> it is not a good look. Find an image, works for you, represents you in some way. You know, maybe I look at Bernice's image and I think she's kind of creative. That could be an, a first impression I have of her. Um, so something that represents who you are, topics you potentially could be covering or writing about or following on LinkedIn. Abstract pictures like this one work the best um, because when they're when they're you know, they can be cropped differently. Um, so whether you're on mobile or desktop. So whatever image you pick, just check it out on a few different devices. But please, background image. Okay, any questions? No, we're gonna put our images up, yes. 
All right, step two, add your education. Add your school, university, majors, degrees, any awards, honors, activities, clubs. Add it all, put it up there. You have it in your resume, put it in LinkedIn. Pretty straightforward. Don't skip this part. Step three, all right, this is where we have some fun. Add your work experience. Any full-time, any part-time, any co-op jobs, put them in there. Here's the kind of the, the little, little nut here. Add examples of your work or photos if you can. These go a long way. Look how this one shows up here for our uh, SFU alum, Grace. She works at EA. She put up a few samples there. So quickly, I'm attracted to this profile. Like I want to click on those images. Um, describe what you've accomplished, your responsibilities. Again, this stuff is in your resume. Put it on LinkedIn. Profiles with work experience are 10 times more likely to get messaged. Any questions on work experience? No. Nope. All right. Making progress. Got a few more steps to go. Okay, step four. Add your volunteer experience. Any accomplishments, accreditations, licenses, certifications courses you've taken online, um, any interests. LinkedIn has tons of interest groups. Any that you're joining on LinkedIn online or anywhere else, put them in there. Sorry, Jenny, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Um, for the work experience, um, should we be copying directly from our resume and or should we be making it more concise and more brief? Or is it, can it be the exact same from the resume? Well, interesting. So there are actually resume building tools and uh, for example, in Word, um, and you can actually transport directly into LinkedIn. So there's some connection um, that's already there, but yeah, it can be the same. Um, I guess I can, I would have to take a look at your resume to give you the best advice, which I'm happy to do. Um, but essentially, it's the same type of information. It doesn't have to be more or less casual. Um, it just has to be you. Like, it goes back to the authentic piece. Like, just write the way you write. Um, share what's authentic to you. Write the accomplishments you have in the work that you do. Um, it's a reflection of who you are. So I, I guess I wouldn't put it into a formula, per se. Thank you. Good question. All right. Step five. This one gets missed a lot. Don't, don't skip this step. Um, add your skills. So any relevant skills you've acquired from any work experience or uh, at school, um, there's a lot of options to pick from, so pick them. Uh, pick the relevant ones. And then on top of that, consider recommendations from superiors, from peers, professors, teachers, managers. Um, this one is easy to miss. Um, and I find that it's always best to ask right when you finish a project or a job versus kind of waiting um, but that's okay too. But like if you're working on a big project and it's, you know, a co-op term and it's ending, that's the right time to just take hey, quickly, ping, ping your manager and ask them to put a little recommendation on your LinkedIn. Those things go a really long way. Um, it helps hiring managers a ton um, and actually can save time because then they may not actually wanna call references. They'll just quickly look at your LinkedIn profile and see what they need to see. 
Um, and also the skills part's important because um, students who add four, five or more skills, they receive up to 17 times more profile views. Any questions on skills? Okay, plugging along here, let's go to step six. Okay, draft when summary. You, yeah. When you say when you say uh, recommendations, are you referring to endorsements? Is that the same interchangeable thing in this one here? Yeah. So if you have, if you're on LinkedIn, there's going to be a section down the profile where anyone it doesn't have you know could be anyone can write a little blurb about you. It's the same thing. They're basically saying why Eric is awesome at doing X. Okay, great. Yeah. And also a tip here when asking, you know, I'll give you one. Could you could you do one for me? Like make it reciprocal too. Managers want to get endorsed as being a good manager. So hey, I've appreciated you've been a great manager for me. I'd love to write an endorsement for you on LinkedIn. Would you do the same for me? So you can always counter a little bit so it doesn't feel like you're just asking for something. Goes back to the others piece we talked about. See, told you it's gonna pop in every so often. Others, others, others. All right. Draft a summary. Uh, for me personally, this was the hardest part. Um, I still stare at it on occasion and wonder if these are the right words uh, to use. And this one has probably caused me the most heart palpitations. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, this section is probably next to your photo and background image, like the most important piece, in my opinion. Um, it's prime real estate for you to talk about you. It's what motivates you. You can show a little bit of your personality here. You can use your brand statement like I did. Um, it doesn't have to be too long. Mine's pretty short. It can be a couple paragraphs, totally okay. But this is what people look at first. Like this is kind of the thing that people scroll to on your profile to get just that quick, what's this person about? Because I think I mentioned this earlier, but the fact is that, you know, you're most likely not gonna be ever in a room where a decision is made about your career. Like other people are making decisions about your career without you in the room. And so anything that you can do to help them make that decision in your favor, this is just one of those things. So I do recommend you kind of do take a little extra care, spend some time on the about. And if you've already done a little bit of that personal branding thinking, you're already halfway there and maybe all the way there. So it's all aligned here. And this is, you'll see that this is really where that personal branding shines. One of the um, biggest, gosh, lessons I keep learning and over <laughs> learning and relearning and relearning is that if I don't tell people what I want, they're not going to know. And so if I don't tell people what I'm about, they're going to have a different story in their head. So this is that place for you to be very clear with this is what I'm about. Put it here. And if you want, um, and you're you're working on this. You're I'm happy. You know, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to review it. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Great way to add keywords for which you can get searched up for. Yeah, we're actually going to get to that. Oh, step eight. Anything on the summary? No. Okay. Step seven, customize your URL. Um, 
This can be your name, it can be your handle, what your brand is, um, but please customize it so it's not some random jumble of numbers. Not helpful. Put your name there. It's easier to find you. Put your, you know, handle there. If you're Ryan Reynolds, you know, he's got Van City Reynolds in his LinkedIn uh, URL. Um, people will, will find you easier. So it's a simple, simple step to take. Customize it. This one gets forgotten a lot as well. Okay, any questions? All right, last step. Yeah. Yeah, how do you customize it? Uh, so you can go into your settings and just follow the prompts. Great. All right. Last one. There's a lot more, but this is the last one I've got. Choose creator mode. It's a little controversial sometimes. Um, and it's a pretty new profile setting for LinkedIn members. Um, it was built for creators, people who create content regularly, want to grow an audience um, with their content specifically. Uh, when it first popped out, I thought, oh, I'm not a creator. Like, I'm good. I don't need to be in creator mode. Um, but as I started looking into the benefits, I changed my mind. Um, you know, it lets you, first of all, create and publish content in various formats. That's sort of the traditional LinkedIn doesn't. Um, you can create a following on your content um, and activity way uh, more smoothly. It makes you automatically turns you to um, have people follow you instead of connect. Um, you get some, you know, special video access capabilities, things like that. Um, it's great for growing an audience, cultivating a following, establishing your personal brand. Um, there's one tiny little downside that I found with the creator mode is that it drops the about section down the profile sequencing and it puts feature and activity at the top. And the about section is really, really important. So it does drop it down a little bit, but I think regardless of that, like recruiters, hiring managers, they're, they're gonna find the about section because that's what they're interested in looking at. Um, so I think, it, you know, yes, it might be a little bit of a downside, the other kind of little downside is because the features and activities are kind of highlighted at the top. If you have something that doesn't have a ton of engagement, it may not be the best first impression of your profile. But again, I would still recommend creator mode and just start playing around with it. And to the person who put a note in about the keywords, creator mode lets you put hashtags into your, like right below your name and title. So you can pick a few hashtags and those really start to show um, what your interests are. So mine have, for example, uh, hashtag communications, hashtag coaching, um, hashtag career. So people get a quick like, okay, she's about comms, about coaching, and someone I can talk to about career. And there's a lot to creator mode. So go play with it a little bit. Um, it's something that LinkedIn is investing a lot in, is building their creator community. Question, do you have to be an online creator? What about creators? Ah, that's a great question. Uh, no, you don't. So the creator is um, what you make of it. So it's a, it's kind of a the fancy term we're hearing everywhere at the moment. Um, but no, it's whatever you create um, on LinkedIn, you can be a creator. So if you uh, create and print, if there's a way you want to share that um, on your LinkedIn profile, um, if you can find a way, that's great, but you don't have to be um, a specific type of creator to choose creator mode.
Yeah, we have slides. Uh, yeah, we can we can share those slides for sure. Something else on creator mode. All right. That was the formal content I had for this week. I wanted to take a little easy because uh, next week we're going to get heavy into content on the connections and networking side. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them now um, on anything. If there's anything specific you want to learn about next week, you can pop it in the chat too. I'm happy to, uh, to talk to that. Have you immigrated to Finland? No, I, I am a Finnish citizen. So both of my parents come from Finland um, and I am a Finnish citizen. So I got on a plane and got into the country. So the session is being recorded and we will post it on the FCAT website and send out a link. Um, and then Jenny, as you mentioned, will send out the slides as well. Yeah, okay, let's talk about, so there's a bunch of questions coming in. Um, just scroll here. So Darcy's asking, how would you share presentations, speaking engagements that you've done? You can do that in many different ways. Um, and I actually recommend trying different ways to share that type of content. So you can do a post. If your content lives somewhere, you can absolutely link to it. So write a little post about, hey, I spoke here, this was the highlight, um, or this was it in short, link here, check out my thing. If it's not available and you just wanna give a kind of a Cliff Notes version, hey, this is my speech, this is what I presented. LinkedIn has this really cool feature called Pages that looks a bit like pow the PowerPoint slides I showed. You can create images of your slides and just have people click through them right in the post itself. You could do a little mini synopsis on video. Play with video. Native video on LinkedIn performs really, really well. I just did a practice, not a practice, but a kind of a test run with um, the head of communication, my boss yesterday. He just, we finished a really big event um, announcing some really big news the other day. And so I thought, hey, why don't you just do a quick video recap of some of the learnings um, you had from putting that event together. And it took him five minutes, he posted it on LinkedIn and it's been performing really, really well. So if you love to speak, well, first of all, you are amazing because that is a tough, tough skill. <laughs> but if you are, if you love to speak and present, please, LinkedIn's a great place to kind of share that out on video, share your thoughts. Um, hope that answers your question. How can we update our profile without everyone seeing our updates? Ah. I'm not sure I quite understand that question. So you can update your profile and just go and update it and people don't necessarily get pinged. I think that's something that used to happen on LinkedIn, um, which was quite annoying. <laughs> they would see like this person changed their whatever, but um, you can, you know, if you change your title or something, you can click a box that says, don't share this update. So they've, they've up updated their uh, features a little bit to make it less annoying for others. Okay. so. What about career breaks or two different careers at the same time? So I'll touch on the two different careers at the same time. So it can look, you can just all add it in your experience. So for example, if you're, you know, let's say you have a couple different jobs, put it all in there. It'll show up in the order that you want. So you can play around with the ordering if you want to have one particular experience show up at the top first. Um, but yeah, I would put it all in there. And um, career breaks, if you so are inclined, um, while you are on a career break, continue to post regularly. 
Um, LinkedIn is a great place to let others know what your interests are, what your experiences are. They have this option where you can actually put a little green half circle in your profile that shows you're open to work if you are indeed open to work and want to let everyone know it's a great option. Um, but I would again just kind of don't sweat the the breaks. Those are <laughs> those are common. And um, and continue to post and, and kind of share what you're learning while you're while you're searching. Question is: Would you recommend creating a public profile badge? I don't know what that is. Public profile badge. All profiles are public on LinkedIn, so maybe if you could clarify the question a little bit that would be great uh i'm just in the settings and it says public profile badge promote your profile by adding a badge create badge your blog online resume or website public profile badge so i went to create badge I'm just wondering whether or not badge builder it's probably referring Anyways. to my guess is that it's going to be that kind of real estate within your profile picture. So you'll see like some people have open to work or some people say hiring. Um, so maybe it's that's where you can create a different look for that particular piece of real estate. That's my guess. Great. Okay, opinions on calling yourself a freelancer or listing yourself as an employee of your own corporation agency. Why not both? I say both. Thank if you're you. creator mode, you can put You can play around with the hashtags a little bit. I don't think it has to be one or the other. You can disable update notifications. Yeah, gosh, thank goodness. Okay, I'm going to read this question. How do you recommend building your personal brand and staying authentic on LinkedIn without oversharing too much about your personal interests, professional life, for those of us who aren't super comfortable with posting everything online. I love this question. And I'm gonna go back to others. If you're not comfortable sharing about yourself, share about others. Tell us what other people, what other people wrote that interested you. Uh, repost other people's content and write a little couple words at the top of the repost. One thing that I see a lot of people doing is just reposting content. I don't recommend that. Um, I do think that for you to get the most value is to always add a little piece of yourself um, to what you're reposting to tell the your audience, your followers, why they should care about that content that you're posting. But again, lean onto the others piece because there's going to be times, and I this happens to me a lot, where I'm just not motivated <laughs> to post on LinkedIn. Like maybe I'm just not having a great day or a great week or a great month. Like totally okay. But that I'm just reminded that there's a lot of people out there my community or her posting really interesting things. And so I'm going to share those out. I might put a little tidbit about what I liked about it. Um, but that's one way to kind of continue to build your personal brand by sharing content that is related to your personal brand. Any other questions? All right. Um, so I have two more things before we wrap until next week. So if you are already a member on LinkedIn, I want you to put your URL, even if it's not customized, I won't judge, into the chat window right now. 
And let's all connect with one another. I want to see those LinkedIn URLs. Yes. Great. I guess too embarrassing. It's okay. You'll get there. And when you click on these, um, our new friends here, LinkedIn profiles, if they say follow, um, like mine does, because I'm in creator mode, click the little more button next to it um, and choose connect. So then that's a two-way connection. And you can see mine. Um, Jyoti, if you can put, pop mine in there, that would be great, my LinkedIn URL. Okay, we're all connecting to the, the second thing. If you're up for it, I want you to write one post this week. It can be about anything. It can be a repost. It can be about an article you read, a book, a podcast you listen to, a piece of content that you like, that you want to share. One thing could be something you're learning about. If it is a repost, don't forget to add a little piece of your own take on what you read or what you watched or what you heard. And if you tag me in the post, I will promise you I will go like it. I will comment on it for reach. Love seeing these URLs. Yes. Good stuff. Oh, someone asked if I prefer living in Finland instead of Canada. Um, oh, a tough question. I mean, Canada's, I lived there the first 25 years of my life. Um, I, I, I can't answer that. I love both. I do return to Canada probably four times a year. I spend, I travel to our head office, our Redmond headquarters every quarter. So I always pop up and visit my, my mom and my friends. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for coming, for learning about LinkedIn with me. Go play with it, go dig in, um, and we'll see you next week where we're gonna get a little bit more uh, beyond the profile. Thank you.